date of 1934, typified in January by a magnificent spectacle, the Majestic, the world's largest liner in the world's biggest graving dock at Southampton. Following the tragic death of his father, Albert the Good, Leopold III, the new king of the Belgians, rode in February through Brussels to meet his first parliament. Two outstanding sporting events took place in March. The first, of course, was the boat race. Cambridge beat Oxford for the 11th time in succession with another runaway victory, this time four and a quarter lengths. The other big event was the Grand National at Aintree. Over the famous Betcher's Brook, the first time round, there wasn't a single fall. straight they went, and Golden Miller won by five lengths from Delaunay. Here is the winner with his proud owner, Miss Dorothy Paget. April, His Majesty the King presented the gold medal of the OBE to Sister Dorothy Louise Thomas for heroism in averting an explosion at the Middlesex Hospital. Thousands of enthusiastic football followers came to London to see Manchester City beat Portsmouth in the cup final at Wembley by two goals to one. Australia's 1934 cricket tour opened at Worcester in May, when Don Bradman proved that he was still Don Bradman and made a brilliant start with a score of 206. In the same month, America's Cup challenger Endeavour, afterwards judged unsuccessful against the Cup defender Rainbow, made her first trip under canvas. the derby won by the Maharaja of Rajpiplas, Windsor Lake. A meeting of two dictators, Mussolini and Hitler in Italy. Il Duce welcomed Hitler at Venice. and the beginning of the demolition of the much discussed, and from that point of view, famous Waterloo Bridge. For the first time for years, the singles in the Lawn Tennis Championships for both men and women at Wimbledon in July were won by Great Britain, F.J. Perry, and Miss Dorothy Rao. And thousands found delight in watching the battles royal. Great engineering feat, the wonderful Mersey Tunnel opened. I wish this new tunnel to be known as the Queen's Way. Two world-renowned men were laid to rest in August. Dr. Dolphus, the murdered Chancellor of Austria, 
The cortege is seen passing through the troop-lined streets of Vienna. And Field Marshal von Hindenburg, late President of the German Republic, a great soldier and a shrewd statesman. Final test match at the Oval, which secured the Ashes for Australia. September was marked by two big events. The first was a tragedy, the burning with an appalling loss of life of the liner Morrow Castle, eight miles from the American coast. The second was a triumph, the launching by the Queen of the Cunard White Star Liner 534 at Clyde Bank. October, that King Alexander of Yugoslavia and Monsieur Bartu, the French foreign minister, died at the hands of an assassin in Marseille. The picture shows the funeral of the dead monarch in Belgrade. C.W.A. Scott and T. Campbell Black, who won the big England to Australia air race, seen at the start of the race at Milden Hall, Norfolk, and after their arrival at Melbourne. November was a really royal month. Perhaps nothing delighted the public more than the fact that the King's continued good health enabled His Majesty to attend the Cenotaph ceremony on Armistice Day. The Duke of Gloucester read a message from the King at the Melbourne Centenary celebrations. The enthusiasm of the public knew no bounds at the wedding of the King's youngest son, the Duke of Kent, and Princess Marina at Westminster Abbey. The Duke and Duchess are seen leaving after the ceremony. 